Hello and welcome to class. It's Saturday, January 14th. My name is Kelly Battles. You can see my contact information right there. A reminder that class starts promptly at 8 p.m. Remember to run your audio setup wizard every time you log on. You can do that by clicking on the icon in the upper right hand side of the panel on the left of the screen. It's the icon that looks like a microphone with a red burst coming out of it. Also, every time you log on, your electronic hand is automatically raised. Make sure you click on the hand icon on the left of the screen uh, to lower your hand. A few reminders as we get started. Make sure you turn off your phone, shut your door, and put up a do not disturb sign, and prepare to focus with us. Let's do a quality check. Since you guys are not watching live, I'll do this myself. First of all, is the record sign in the upper right hand corner? Yes, it is. My PowerPoint slides are visible, and the audio is working, and the talk button is selected. Our big question for this session is, how can we make online English literature and composition classes collaborative and engaging? Student engagement is a big issue for all classrooms, all ages, all modalities. It's a universal challenge. A 2015 Gallup survey of almost a million students in grades 5 through 12 um, about their level of involvement in and enthusiasm for school noted that about half of them felt some level of disengagement in school. Um, and this interferes quite a bit with uh, learning acquisition. Of course, it becomes even more of a challenge in the online modality. What I'd like you to do now is to stop and reflect. When was the time you felt disengaged as a student? Think of both online and traditional classroom experiences. Now, think about the source of that boredom. Try to diagnose it. Was it that you had too much busy work? Was there no variety? Was the teacher presentation boring? Uh, was the work too abstract? Was an unclear point or an unclear big question? Was it passive with no activities? Um, or perhaps you didn't have to pay attention to do a good job. Trying to diagnose the source of that boredom is the first step uh, to making sure that your classes are more engaged. In this lesson, we'll explore a theory called the Communities of Inquiry Theory that speaks to this issue of engagement. Our learning objectives are to describe the Community of Inquiry Framework, identify how the COI can be used to transform e-learning, and to apply the COI to your own classroom. Traditionally, when it comes to online learning, distance learning, it was always delivered in a static way, a set of materials to students that was not differentiated uh, by the learner and did not involve any interaction. In fact, I can remember uh, in the time before the online environment, um, I took a correspondence course in high school where I received um, a package in the mail every week with a reading assignment and some worksheets. I filled them out and I returned them. The early days of distance learning in the online environment involved um, basically a version of this, receiving a package, filling out worksheets, sending it in. This model assumes passive students who receive learning with no interaction uh, with the instructor or with other students. The class content goes in only one direction. The Community of Inquiry is a framework pioneered by Randy Garrison, and it reconceptualizes the personal dynamics of the classroom uh, so that it's considered to be dialogical, interactive. Um, and uh, you can see here it's dynamic, and um, it's not just teacher and student interaction, but it's interaction between students, um, interaction between students and content, 
and of course the content and the teacher. So it goes in multiple directions. Here's a diagram that visually demonstrates the interrelated nature of the three aspects of the community of inquiry. They are social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. You can see here and here and here. We'll talk about each one of these. First of all, uh, teaching presence. The teacher designs the material, delivers it, and facilitates any course activities. However, it's not just the teacher who exhibits teaching presence. As the theory has evolved, we realize that students exhibit teaching presence too. And in fact, having students take on a teaching presence can be a very effective way uh, for them to uh, attain learning. However, how do we transfer teaching presence from the classroom to the online classroom? I'd like you to pause the video and write down three ideas. Let's take a look at a YouTube video, very short, um, that uh, demonstrates one way via audio that we can achieve teaching presence. I'm going to paste the link into the chat box. And then we'll also take a look via web tour. The great part about adding audio into your online classes is that you can do it from two perspectives. One, you can do it from the instructor perspective where you're communicating to your students via audio. And two, you can have your students interacting with you or with each other with audio as well. What's really also great about adding this additional channel into your online environment is aside from the opportunities for interaction that it develops, it also gives you the ability to meet multiple types of learners. Okay, so the next aspect of the community of inquiry framework is cognitive presence, and perhaps this is a bit more familiar. Learners engage in a process of inquiry, reflection, and discourse to engage in the learning process. And lastly, social presence. This is a very neglected aspect of developing a community sense um, in the learning experience. It involves um, learners identifying with a group of other learners as well as the teacher and engaging in mutual inquiry and reflection. This involves cooperation as well as mutual correction. Now let's see how you've absorbed uh, our definitions of the three presences. Pause the recording and write down the three elements of the community of inquiry with a short description in your own words. Now let's start to connect it to our field of English literature and composition. Take a moment to Google community of inquiry in the blank classroom in the online literature classroom, in the uh, composition classroom, and see what you find. So how does the community of inquiry model apply to the English literature or composition online classroom? Perhaps you found some ideas through your Google search. Here's an example from me in my experience. Uh, I always have my online students do peer reviews of rough draft, which is something that is very common in the face-to-face -face classroom, but is some, sometimes um, not done in the online classroom because the logistics of setting it up um, might be complicated. However, if you practice it, it's very simple. Um, I don't just have them do a uh, peer review of rough drafts, though. They also do preliminary steps like research questions and abstracts. So there is a dialogical element between and among students from the very beginning of the writing process. And of course, I also have them do discussion forums to discuss the literature. 
So in summary, uh, the, the community of inquiries framework provides a way for us to think about how there's three elements of presence in the classroom, teaching, social, and cognitive. Um, and that these three elements can be used to achieve a collaborative environment um, in, in the online modality for more effective learning. After our session, be sure to log on to Pilot and take the quiz to assess your understanding of the Community of Inquiry framework. Finally, please let me know if you have any questions. Email me at kelly.battles at write.edu with any questions about the material we've covered today. And if you'd like to know more about the references from today, the Gallup poll I mentioned at the beginning can be found at this URL. And Randy Garrison's book, E-Learning in the 21st Century, uh, describes the entire community of inquiry framework. Thank you very much.